You were on a school trip and were on your way back to the hotel late one night when your school bus full of children broke down in a lonely area. Describe what you saw and experienced as you looked around. How was the problem solved? This is a descriptive essay. So even if your story plot is very basic, yet the description should be detailed. Use visual imagery, auditory imagery, use a little bit of direct speech such that the reader can imagine the entire experience. Clank, clank, followed by the sudden screech of the tires, jolted me out of my slumber. What a good start. Screech, noise, jolted, shocked. Slumber, sleep. So you were asleep in the bus and you were shocked to be awakened. Rubbing my eyes, I peered out of the bus window to see pitch darkness, complete darkness, all around. What happened? I asked my friend Sunil, sitting beside me. As if in answer to my query, the lights came on. Now that's a coincidence. Well-framed sentence. And the driver's cabin door opened. Our conductor and guide, a short, stout man. Stout, fat. You have to describe the people as well, their appearances. With a receding hairline, means bald from the front. Emerged, gesticulating with his hand. Axel Tootgaya. Now he's a driver, a conductor, so it's okay if he uses a bit of Hindi. But very rarely in your essay, okay? We groaned in disgust and slumped back on our seats. Peering at my wristwatch, looking at it, I realized that we had barely travelled an hour from Dudhua National Park and were about an another hour's journey to our hotel in Lakhimpur. Thus probably we were in the middle of the jungle. A sudden fear crept into my heart, entered my heart. I anxiously peered out of the window, anxiously, restlessly. Straining my eyes. Straining means applying stress on my eyes when you see something in the dark. To survey the surroundings. Survey, check. In the dim moonlight, I could see nothing but tall sal and sesame trees. Wow, how beautifully has it described the surroundings. Their leaves rustling in the mild breeze. This too seemed quite loud compared to the sudden silence that had enveloped us. Enveloped, covered. Well, boys, the voice of a class teacher, Mr. Johnson, broke the stillness. Direct speech. The bus's axle has broken and they are trying to call for another bus, but that will ferry us back to the hotel. Ferry us, mistake us. However, this shall take two or three hours. Please stay inside the bus, for we are in a dense forest area. Do not, I repeat, do not venture out under any circumstance. The stern warning, stern, strict warning, made some students who had scampered out of their seat to straighten their legs outside slump back. So they wanted to just stretch their legs, but after the warning, they are getting slumped back into their seats. My worst fear was being confirmed. I stretched my legs, trying to make myself as comfortable as possible. After some time, unable to bear the stuffiness inside the bus, I slid the window pane open and stuck my neck out to catch some fresh air. An earthy fragrance. See? Smell. Imagery. Of an unusual variety wafted in the air. Wafted. Spread. Which seemed quite refreshing. The occasional hooting of an owl, that's a noise, and chirping of the birds livened the otherwise grave atmosphere. Livened, energized, grave, serious. The unusual calm was suddenly broken by a loud alarm call of a langur, that is a type of monkey, which echoed throughout the jungle. Just then, I felt two strong hands on my shoulders, pushing me back to my seat, simultaneously slamming the window shut. Mr. Johnson stood glowering at me, that is staring angrily. Stupid! We are in a jungle. The alarm call you just heard could in all possibility herald the presence of a tiger in the vicinity. Herald, announce. Vicinity, nearby area. This heightened my anxiety. I started peering through the closed window panes of the bus trying to get a glimpse of the elusive animal. Elusive, difficult to spot. Who was that? The tiger. Who had not put in an appearance on a forest trek throughout the day. Minutes ticked by but nothing happened. Suddenly, the calm was broken by what seemed to be a herd trampling the dry leaves in the headlight of the bus, I saw a herd of Neil guys, that is a, a tribe of antelopes, you know, kind of deer, darting across the road, darting, running. This is a very beautiful sentence. In the darkness, you could not see them, but in the light of the headlight, you could see the Neil guys crossing. Seeing the fear-stricken animals from so close quarters, quarters distance, made me a bit nervous. Danger indeed seemed to be lurking nearby. Lurking, hanging. A strange feeling crept <coughs> through me. I had read stories of Jim Corbett and how he killed man-eaters using a goat as a bait. Bait is um, a food to trap someone. 
I could now imagine how the goat may have felt waiting for the tiger to pounce on it, jump on it, attack it. Unfortunately here, we were the bait and the tiger was the hunter. Fortunately nothing happened. After an hour or so, a new bus arrived and under the watchful eyes of the teacher and the conductor, we were hurled into it, sent into it. By midnight, we were back in a hotel. I, however, did not forget to say a brief prayer before I dozed off to sleep. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.